lot of people might say, what's the deal with care for creation? It's, it sounds good, but aren't there more important matters? What about humans? You have human, human trafficking in Cambodia, the famines in East Africa, the AIDS epidemic in South Africa, all the abortion struggles here and abroad. Uh, what's, what's the deal with animals? So as a good Dominican, I went to the Summa Theologica by St. Thomas Aquinas. And what does he say about animals? Well, similar to maybe what others would object, uh, he's not too favorable. He says two important things about animals. This is question 64 of the Secunda Secunda. First he says, God created animals for our use. So, if they're for our use, as long as we use them appropriately, you know, what's, what is it that we're doing wrong? Secondly, in terms of who we should act morally to, we should probably focus more on the things that are rational. So humans would be more rational. So if there's an abuse to human dignity, that would take more precedence than something that's not rational. So he would say that animals are not rational and therefore don't deserve as much moral attention. So what do we do from here? I don't intend to uh, question St. Thomas, but a couple of things uh, should be at least considered to flesh this out a bit more. First, with regards to using animals properly or appropriately, what, what does that mean? What, what, what would be an appropriate use of animals? So a passage I want us to consider would be from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, where Jesus is uh, talking to the crowds about fears, fears of death. And he wants to reassure them, and it's interesting, he says, Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father's will. So again, he's, he's obviously focusing on the dignity of the human person that God is with humans, but it's interesting how he gets there. How, you know, how does, he, how does he go from A to B? Well, he uses the fact that he knows about the two sparrows, that you know, they're, they're so little they could be so, they sold together for a cent, uh, and how much more for humans. But, before he goes how much more humans, he still refers to the animals. So I'm not, I'm not trying to suggest that the needs of, of humanity are not important, but to not view uh, those of the animals would be, would be an incomplete picture. And secondly, it uh, has to do with what capacities does any person or anything need for us to have a duty uh, of care? So I'm thinking of, you know, we want to care for humans, but what, according to Thomas, that would depend on rationality. So since humans are rational, they would demand a greater moral responsibility. You would want to take care of your children more than your lawn, for example. But maybe an extreme example would be... Um, a person with Alzheimer's, an Alzheimer's patient. What, what happens when a person starts to lose their rationality or is totally irrational? Uh, wouldn't, you know, we would all say that we still have an obligation to love them. So the question is, what, what is it about that person that still demands our moral obligation? It must be something beyond ration. And we can think about it maybe as gift. This person, for whatever reason, has been given the gift of life. Um, and it's, in view of creation, it's not just humans that are given that gift of life. Um, we could think of creation as God's house. You know, we don't own the house as humans. We were one of the main uh, contributors and, and renters, but we're not the owners. So for us to go into someone's house and smash someone's plate, if the plate maybe is not an important part of the house, uh, but it's not ours to smash per se. Uh, we can use the plate for food or, or whatever, um, but that idea of perspective, per, human perspective versus God's perspective. We've been talking about St. Thomas Aquinas, certainly a prolific theologian. I wanted to shift to another uh, Dominican friar who has maybe a more uh, Franciscan take on the animal picture, and that's uh, St. Martin de Porres, a 16th century Dominican from Lima, Peru, and the patron saint of our beloved 
Southern Province friars. And the, there's a wonderful story about him uh, with his prior, and they're working out a specific problem having to do with uh, an animal infestation, we might call it. As a, as a brother, he was in charge of many things, but among them was cleaning the priory, making sure things were in order. Um, and there happened to be one week uh, a particular manifestation of mice. They were getting in everywhere, people's rooms, the refectory, the recreation rooms. And the prior, becoming very upset with this, goes to Martin and says, you need to take care of this. He recommends a poison to use to kill them, eradicate them. But Martin uh, wasn't going wasn't gonna to poison him if he, if he could avoid it. So he asked the prior for an extension. He says, if I can get them away without a poison, is that okay? And he says, whatever, just get them out. So he goes, as the story has it, to one of the mice, maybe it's the head mouse, and starts talking to him and he says look my prior really wants you guys out of the priory how about if I put some food in the barn every day just the leftover scraps we weren't going to eat it anyways you go there tell all the mice to do that leave the house and then I won't have to kill you and there there you have it a miraculous story of Saint Martin thinking of the animals needs trying to find a, an alternate solution to just poisoning them right out We have a couple different options here to conclude with um, in terms of you know what do we do from here uh, practically speaking some people uh, with the abuses of animals all these things they become uh, vegetarian and they can't you know well there, there are a variety of reasons for becoming vegetarian but some people uh, would do that other people become uh, vegan you know no animal products at all um, others might buy organically or locally grown food um, but all those choices although you know virtuous and good I'm not sure I would you know I can't recommend them to everyone because they would entail um, you know in many instances a, a raise in terms of how much money you're going to be putting into your food so if you go buy organically that's usually going to cost more or locally grown uh, you can't just do a one-stop shop but I would say that everyone can change their mentality in terms of how we approach animals and that could be a that could be a significant shift in terms of um, our progress I think in this matter and that is simply viewing animals as part of creation uh, perhaps they're not rational or as rational as, as humans but uh, that doesn't mean that God still knows those two sparrows um, and ultimately they're they are part of the marginalized section of creation. They're the ones that become extinct. And to grow in our own virtue and morality, it is good for us to be able to, with the more power that we have, uh, keep those the small guys in perspective. Um, so that, hopefully, we too one day might, with God, as he said in Genesis, look upon all that was created and truly see that it is good.